No, not until I complete my primary function. Erase Ubuntu and cute from existence. Hello, Terrans, and welcome to yet another Gnome x Gnome episode. Originally, I wanted to upload this two days ago. Um, I believe five days distance is the perfect amount of time to look at Gnome development because then too many things are gathered to cover. But something came up and I had to delay it. Perhaps next time I'll be on schedule, or not. Who knows? Anyway, so this week we had the release of GTK 4.13.6, which is one of the greatest releases on GTK's For Life, because it changes the NGL renderer to be the default renderer, but that's not all. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to start with one liner patch that changes how the sidebar size is calculated. Um, nowadays we have breakpoint-based layouts which take care of ensuring the sidebar has the desired size. And by breakpoints, Antonio means add white a breakpoints class. But the sidebar was itself requesting a size. It was smaller than what the window layout enforces, so it was not noticed until now that it is forcing the progress indicator in the sidebar to be clipped off window. That's basically a different patch that changes the design of the longtime operations, and it places it in the bottom of the sidebar. We'll show you in a bit. Um, that patch just removes this line. The important part is that now the sidebar width will scale slightly differently, but in consistency with every other no map. Sometimes, though, it can be annoying that we can't manually resize it or even hide it, and that applies in more apps and not just files. The other thing is the redesign of operations, so let's force one. Now the operation notification will go down here, which is a pro way to miss it specially in a maximized window, plus the pop-ups looks terrible. Not saying this change was exclusively made for the mobile, but it certainly benefits it. Still, that popover is screaming, I don't belong. At least cancel acts immediately. In the past, there is some delay which was so frustrating, almost bringing uncertainty. Patches are from Cory Burla, and in one commit he says, Effie has a beautiful circular progress bar. Let's use that instead of reinventing the wheel. Well, sometimes you should reinvent the wheel, because there is nothing beautiful about it. You can only call it boring, and that only if you want to be polite. It's the end of the line for a huge refactoring on Views model of files, and the last part is now merged. Grats to Antonio for pulling it this off. And one thing that fixes is the instant loading of views when switching without causing a reloading anymore. Isn't performance improvements always the best? Nope, they are not, because next there is something you're craving for for too long. So we are looking at the open merge requests, and this one says reorganization of places. Home is on top of the list. There is also a networks item that is a rename of other locations when some other locations like music and pictures are missing. Let's check on commits. Um, okay, this one. The XDG directories are always present in the sidebar and not removable whether or not they are relevant to someone's use case, which means the sidebar has several items populating it regardless, pushing relevant bookmarks further down the list, potentially scrolled out of view. Also, we need to make space for the upcoming network place and some internal storage units which are coming back to the sidebar. Let's reduce the number of default sidebar locations by turning all XDG user directories but downloads back into regular bookmarks. Also, reposition the home to the first place as the default location. What's happening here is that documents, videos, pictures go down here with the rest bookmarks, and we can't move them up here. The other thing is that our hard drives are now out here and not inside the other locations and other locations have been renamed to network and have received various changes that I didn't check them, to be honest, because I ain't using them anyway. Back to locations reorganization. If you're asking me, I believe it's stupid, because it basically does the bottom part of sidebar more useful than the top, and in any case, why we just can't have a single placeholder that is fully configurable. And because I know someone will say dolphin already, two words, screw you! <laughs> Um, there isn't something really exciting in Mutter the last few days. Some cleanups by Bilal El Musawi, some code improvements and fixes by Sebastian Wick, which by the way, he also introduced a support for RGB range setting for the Intel card driver since it's getting on DRM. But there is work going on on open merge requests, and I want to highlight two of them. The first is the direct scan out for cropped and scaled surfaces that improves performance in some videos and games, and it is planned for GNOME 46. The second is the implementation of synchronized objects Wayland protocol, also planned for GNOME 46. 
That can improve the desktop experience by allowing more parallelism and efficiency in the GPU usage by synchronizing different types of GPU work, such as rendering, compute, and copy operations. Because I'm a very nice person, I'll give you some KDE news too, so there is also an open merge request for KWIN. Not much on Shell either this week. Some style sheet changes by Sam Hewitt, I'll show you in a bit. Various fixes by Florian Molnar. Um, Florian also ported extensions to adaptive dialogues from AdWida 1.5 with the new fancy bottom sheets, among others. Julian Sparber is probably the top contributor this week for his work on notifications, although the notifications grouping isn't merged yet. Um, basically, I think that's pretty much everything. So let me show you some visuals, all right? Meanwhile, there is a merge request for adding hardware encoding for screencasts that might come on GNOME 46. So, biggest change is on notification bubble, that we have a brand new header with the application icon, the app name, and the timestamp. Actually, this is pre-work for the notifications grouping. This might seem like I'm over-exaggerating, but the new radio-like switches are so high visibility. I extra noticed them on GDM session without even going through the patches. I think that selection is new too. All right, GTK, and typically Matthias pushes fixes all day, every day. And by the way, Glib had also another quite active week with various code improvements, but I'm not going to cover it. Anyway, for now, we care for the release notes of GTK 4.13.6. So this release makes the NGL the default renderer, but if significant problems show up, they will revert this change for 4.14, Although using it for a week, I can't even tell the difference, so hopefully it should be okay. Matthias has also written a blog post that you are supposed to read it yourselves, but I'm going to quickly highlight a few points. The first is the single source, and most specifically, the two renderers are built from the same source. It is modeled to follow Vulkan APIs with some abstractions to cover the differences between Vulkan and GL. Super interesting is the fact that Matthias says that's possible to create such abstractions for Metal and DirectX interfaces that can place GTK in a whole different position as a cross-platform toolkit. Um, some implementation details. I'm skipping, like, there's not tomorrow. On capabilities, the new renderer can handle anti-aliasing better, probably with some extra cost, though. It improves fractional scaling, giving a sharper image with less pixels. It has DMA buff support that basically reduces the copy of buffers on kernel subsystems and potentially increases the performance on things like videos and games. On things they were dropped, it can't render GL shaders nodes anymore. GTK4 had a demo that was flexing that feature if you remember, but other than this, I never saw it anywhere else. Is it faster? Nope. The new renderers are not optimized for performance yet, but they aren't slower either. In my testing, they score around the same FPS. Um, in the meantime, the reason Vulkan isn't the default renderer yet, it's because it doesn't integrate with some components like the WebKit and the GTK GL area. Matthias says that hopefully these issues will be addressed in the not too distant future, and then they will revisit the default renderer decision. On future plans includes proper color handling, off the main thread rendering, better performance, but most important of everything is probably the path rendering on GPU, so one day we can see actual good graphical applications. I mentioned the new Edwida dialog in the previous episode, but this week Alice merged it on the main, and apart the awesomeness of it, I want to show you something on the documentation. So there is a detailed migration guide, and it shouldn't be extra dramatic to port on the new widgets, although that's a bit negotiable on how many widgets an app has to migrate. Yeah, what's crazy though is how much time you have to migrate. Well, you haven't much. To be exact, you only have six months until GNOME 47 because the old widgets will be deprecated. Okay, we all knew it. GNOME and GTK weren't exactly famous for their backward compatibility, but you may now thinking this is bullshits in a whole new level. I don't really know, but as a lucky guess, I would say that the idea is that every Adwaita app is basically running on a flat pack runtime. So, as long as the developer doesn't update the runtime, the app won't break. 
Eventually though, you have to update because GNOME runtimes get like two years of maintenance tops and apart security reasons and whatever other considerations, you can't just have 26 runtimes installed just because developers didn't update the about dialog, so certainly this situation doesn't look good. It's not really a problem at the moment because there aren't one million Adwaita apps, but still. But Christian is always prepared, so he ported to Adwaita 1.5 already, both the text editor and builder. First, he updated the dependencies, and then he moved the about from the window class to dialog, probably in four seconds, coffee making included. Okay, let me show it to you. Even if you can do try it easily already, it's on nightly flat pack. So in a normal window, the about will open like that. Um, one more time. In case you missed it, there is a cool new animation. And if we narrow the window, then the dialog will launch with a bottom-up animation and an elastic effect. Super, super nice. It totally deserved the deprecation. And of course, that uses the new renderer already, just checking. Um, but unfortunately, I'm still on X because even with everything latest, the X Wayland apps are still flickering with NVIDIA drivers. A bummer. And so that was everything for now. Drink water, stay safe, and see you next time. Bye-bye, 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 bye-bye!